From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN New News. Good afternoon, I'm Diane Parker. Miller has our Monday forecast, plus we take you to Wyoming to one of the biggest street parties in the entire state. But first, our top story. A severe storm late Saturday has left Miles City in shambles. Nearly 80 mile per hour winds and heavy rain ravaged the entire area, downing power poles, uprooting trees, even tearing some roofs off buildings. The damage spreading for miles, leaving at many looking at days, if not weeks, to clean it all up. Our Alina Howder has more on the fast moving yet destructive storm. This giant tree that fell into JC Park in Mile City is just a small part of the destruction the community is going through. From down power lines to crush cars, they're picking up the pieces slowly but surely. This isn't what Mile City native Angelia Jones had planned this Sunday. It was a lot worse than I could have ever imagined. Picking up the pieces of a tree that fell onto a property she landscapes. Eight foot root balls sticking out of some people's yards and trees on cars and houses. She's not the only one. These trees at Honda Trails are what's left of more than 70 mile per hour winds that wrecked Mile City. At least three people were reportedly injured. The entire city, uh, they ended up flipping the switch. There was power lines down pretty much on every street. The power might be back on for most of Miles City. After call after call. But the work's not over for Custer County disaster and emergency and fire chief. We're just uh, praying we don't catch any more, more wildland fires. We had uh, three um, caused with the storm too ahead of it. A sight to see for storm chasers Matt Hanwold and Brendan Lawrence of Big Sky Weather. The wind started picking up. We could see it blowing across the field. Um, like I said, you can see the dust rolling in for miles and miles away. We actually encountered a lady that drove through it further north in the state. Her windshield was shattered. She was pretty shaken up. Chagas isn't sure how much damage the storm caused in terms of dollars, but he says it will take a lot of manpower to clean it up. The more the people pick it up themselves instead of throwing it in the street, it saves, you know, the city a lot of money instead of them having to go back and pick it up. But for residents like Angelia, it was a once in a lifetime opportunity. It leaves me in awe of you can go from a beautiful, bright, sunny day to uprooted trees and hundreds of thousands, if not million dollars of damage in the course of 45. In Mile City, Alina Howder, MTN News. Happy Monday, everybody. Hopefully you've been in a good day for you so far. A look at your national headlines, and we're going to jump into our local forecast coming up here in just a bit. But first, you can see we do have a chance at some wicked weather there. Middle Mississippi Valley, Western Ohio Valley, the Great Lakes risk of severe storms today. Middle Mississippi Valley, parts of it anyway, up into the Great Lakes, we have a risk of excessive rainfall as well. And it's still quite hot across portions of the U.S. Mid-Atlantic states, New England, Central and Southern Plains, Middle and Lower Mississippi Valley, uh, Western Ohio and Western Tennessee Valleys, excessive heat warnings and watches and advisories in effect today. Here locally, we've got the benefit of a backdoor cold front coming in from Canada, so we have some cooler air behind that. It's going to bring those temperatures down, escaping the extreme heat for the next couple of days. But does it turn hot again, though? I'll let you know coming up. Several people under evacuation orders in Rosebud County today as several wildfires erupt across that region. Currently, there are more than 60 fires burning across Montana, with nearly 40 of those on the eastern side of the state. Two of those fires, the Deadman Fire and the Anderson Fire, forcing evacuations from the Tongue River Road heading south to the Rosebud County line. The Anderson Fire has exploded to more than 9,000 acres, while the Deadman Fire is at 6,000 plus. Several other smaller fires are also burning in that area as well. Fire officials say the flames are burning in an isolated area and crews were starting to make progress with building fire lines late last night. Now the Red Cross is on standby if a shelter is needed. Near Helena, the state's largest fire continues to burn, that being the Horse Gulch Fire two miles north of Canyon Ferry. That blaze now sitting at more than 12,000 acres burned and remains at 0% contained. However, there is some good news this noon as authorities have begun to lift some of the evacuation orders. The area between Jimtown Road and Hellgate Gulch Road south of Canyon Ferry has now transitioned from an evacuation order to a warning. Campgrounds in the area do remain closed. More than 150,000 fire personnel are working the reportedly human-caused fire. 
Fire crews are reminding the air the state gets drier. Firefighters put out a 63 acre fire southwest of Dillon along Montana Highway 324. Investigators believe the fire started from a trailer dragging a leveling jack sparking the fire. Montana Fire Department of Rural Resources and Conservation reminds residents to obey fire restrictions. And you can head over to mtfireinfo.org for a list of updated fire restrictions across the state. One woman is dead this noon after an apparent drowning yesterday afternoon on the Yellowstone River. Yellowstone County Sheriff Mike Linder says the adult female was swimming with another individual near Sportsman's Park when she got caught in the current. A boater in the area located the woman downstream and with help of witness, they did perform CPR, but Linder says she did not make it. A person remains missing somewhere in Rimrock Lake in the East Rosebud drainage after slipping and being washed away into rapid moving water. The Carbon County Sheriff says it happened Friday, but this weekend's search involved ground crews and helicopters. A bystander says the person slipped into East Rosebud Creek trying to cross where the Rimrock Lake bridge was washed out during the 2022 floods. The missing person's name has not been released, but the family has been notified. The small town of Knoxon is facing another setback on its path to recovery after two devastating fires in town. Knoxon's bridge in town is currently closed due to structural damage on the support beams on one side of the bridge. The bridge closure has led to many issues, including the inability to receive deliveries of food and other goods into town, and residents currently cannot leave town. The Knoxon Fire Department is currently split in half with trucks on the town's side side of the bridge and trucks on the out of town side of the bridge to defend against potential wildfires. Knoxon Fire Chief Jim Byler says the town will have to wait two weeks for representatives from the state to inspect the bridge to determine the next steps to repair the bridge. There has been some major controversy over the fate of the Flathead Warming Center and tonight Warming Center representatives and the Kalispell City Council will have a special hearing on this matter. The Flathead Warming Center is one of the homeless shelters in the Kalispell area that provides beds, showers, laundry and other resources to the homeless community. Tonight at 7 at Kalispell City Hall, the Flathead Warming Center will have their first opportunity to speak with the City Council on the possible revocation of their permit. The initial discussion on the permit began after multiple complaints from neighbors surrounding the warming center were brought to the city council's attention. Bannock State Park is a great place to see remnants of Montana's early history. It is apparent not only in its buildings, but their displays. Thanks to the efforts of dozens of people this coming weekend, you can travel back in time to when Bannock and Montana were young. MTN's Chet Lehman takes a look at Bannock Days. Visiting a ghost town or an old homestead like the Parker Homestead here outside of Willow Creek is like taking a step back in time. But with empty buildings and quiet streets, it's hard to imagine what it was like when this area was new. For Montana's premier tenant, a lot of dedicated people spend one weekend each year trying to bring that community back to life. That happens this weekend. Bannock Days is, is, is probably the best way to do that for Bannock. Um, there's, there's reenactors that, uh, that are there to, to share uh, their wealth of information and knowledge uh, about Bannock and, uh, and what life was like uh, here in, in the early, early days of, uh, of settlement of Montana. Uh, and, and it's just a really, really family-friendly and, and exciting way to see that. Family friendly because Bannock Days offers a lots of hands on activities to help you experience life in Bannock in the 1860s. Personally, my favorite is, is gold panning because uh, uh, you get to actually get your hands on some pay dirt and, uh, and, and find gold in, in a gold pan. Um, but there's candle making, there's, uh, those, there's other artisan demonstrations, there's uh, reenactments and other things that, that really make this a really fun event uh, for, uh, for families and visitors. Jacobson notes that parking is limited at Bannock State Park. He encourages carpooling, or better yet, catching a free ride. 
There's also a, a shuttle service that they can take advantage of. Um, there will be buses uh, traveling from the fairgrounds in Dillon to take you uh, to Bannock Days. It's a free shuttle, and then you don't even have to worry about parking while you're there. Bannock Days runs Saturday 9 to 5, Sunday 9 to 4.30. Head over to the FWP website for more information. At the Parker Homestead near Willow Creek, Chet Lehman, MTN News.